autumn is in the air and I have the perfect dinner for a rainy evening by the fire. Marinated broiled tofu served over roasted caramelized root vegetables with a curried applesauce. I'm gonna serve that with sauteed beet greens and our viewer challenge of the day, a healthier carrot cake full of pecans and pineapple and everything that makes it delicious. Topped with a light fluffy cream cheese frosting that leaves out the cholesterol. And our cocktail of the day, a ginger martini with well, I'm not gonna tell you, it's a surprise. I'm Jen and welcome to my kitchen. First I'm going to start with our root vegetables. Now I've chosen two different kinds of beets. I have a red beet and a yellow beet and also a sweet potato, three of my favorites. So I'm just going to brush these with a little bit of oil and again I'm always careful about how much oil I use on things. So I'd prefer to brush it on rather than pour it on. And if you're using a tray that sticks, you might want to put a little oil on the tray before you start, but just a touch. A little kosher salt. A little bit of pepper. Now I've peeled and diced these. And I did a real nice petite dice because I want them to cook rather quickly and I just want them to have that nice soft, small texture to complement the tofu. So I'm gonna, oh wait, I wanna add some ginger first before I put them in the oven. Just a little bit of dried ginger over the top because that's gonna go so nicely with the curried tofu. I'm gonna put these in the oven at about 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And now for our beet greens, because I don't want to waste a thing. I love beets. And the greens are so nutritious. And so often people just throw them away. And why do that? So into our pan, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of oil. And to that, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of fresh ginger. Because again, I want my layering of flavors to kind of complement each other. We have ginger with the root vegetables and ginger in our beet greens. And I'm gonna add a little bit of agave nectar as a sweetener because beet greens tend to be bitter and so I wanna really bring out the flavors that complement them well. It's a fun alternative to spinach. Okay, I'm just gonna let these saute and then we're gonna do our marinated broiled tofu and our curried applesauce. Now pork chops with applesauce were a favorite of mine growing up, but I'm gonna do a more eco-friendly version, which is of course the savory tofu with applesauce. And I'm gonna dress it up by doing a curried applesauce. So I'm gonna start with one cup of apple juice. And I wanted my pan a little hot so that it starts to reduce it a bit. To that I'm gonna add two large diced apples. And I've put some ahead of time in water with a little bit of lemon juice so that they stay nice and don't turn brown. And I'm just gonna show you how I dice these up. So there we go, some just nice, small diced apple pieces. Now I'm gonna drain the rest of these and add those to that as well. into our applesauce. Now to that, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of Madras curry, which is just a wonderfully aromatic curry. And cinnamon will complement it nicely, so I have a teaspoon of cinnamon to add, and a teaspoon of fresh chopped ginger. Mmm, the cinnamon with that Madras curry, such a nice flavor. And of course, applesauce typically has cinnamon in it, so you're sticking with a the theme. You add a little bit, just a pinch of kosher salt, a little bit of black pepper, again, just a tiny, tiny pinch. This is gonna be a really nice complement to our tofu. And now, I'm gonna take our roasted root vegetables out of the oven. 
Oh, these look gorgeous. Mmm, and they smell so good. I love roasted root vegetables in the fall. So I'm gonna just set these here. Woo, to cool. I don't wanna burn myself. And I'm gonna start our marinated tofu. First, I'm gonna put together the marinade. I have a tablespoon of oil. I'm using a grapeseed oil. Two tablespoons of tamari, which is a Japanese style soy sauce. And one teaspoon of fresh garlic and about half a teaspoon of powdered ginger. Now I'm just gonna give that a quick stir with my marinade brush here. All right, now before I put my tofu on my pan, I wanna prep my pan. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of oil on the pan. There we go, spread that around. Now we're gonna cut our tofu. Now, if you don't happen to know what tofu is, tofu is made from soy milk, very similar to the way that cheese is made from regular milk. And it comes in all different kind of uh, consistencies. You have very light tofu, all the way to firm tofu, and you have vacuum packed tofu and tofu that comes in liquid. For this type of a recipe, I want a firm tofu that's vacuum packed. So I've cut it into some pretty squares some pretty triangles, and I'm gonna go ahead and set those on our plate, or our tray. <laughs> and then I'm gonna brush them with our marinade. Alrighty, let's put this in the oven, and I'm gonna put it under the broiler on high broil for about seven minutes a side. And when we come back, I'm gonna plate this and start our carrot cake. Everything is smelling so good. I can't wait to plate this gorgeous dinner. Now I'm gonna start with our roasted root vegetables, our beets, and sweet potato. And you can use whatever roasted root vegetables you want. If you love turnips, if you love yams, what's ever in season and what's ever beautiful. That's what I go for. <laughs> Now I'm gonna slip my beet greens back on so that I can finish them off and still have them nice and warm. I'm gonna just put a little kosher salt in there with them, and a little pepper. And just let those saute up for a second more. And literally, when I said a couple seconds, I meant a couple seconds. Mmm. These are gonna be so good and with that little bit of ginger and everything in there, yum. Now let's get out the tofu. That is broiled to perfection. And I'm telling you, with the, uh, with a marinade on it, mmm. I love food and it's so easy to make things look pretty and fun. Set that down there. Now to finish off our applesauce. This is cooked down nicely, and so I'm just gonna take some of it and put it in my food processor. Mmm. Oh, that little bit of curry in there. I'm telling you, it makes such a difference. I love applesauce, but it's fun to have some nice surprising flavors sometimes. Okay, I think that's probably gonna be enough for this, so. Just slip that on. Mm, oh, this looks beautiful. Wow. Look at that. Perfect autumn day food. I'm just gonna put a little just right over the tofu. I can't wait to eat this. So if you've never tried tofu before, this is a great first recipe for you. And when we come back, our viewer challenge of the day, carrot cake and our special cocktail as well. Now I have to admit that carrot cake is actually my favorite way to eat carrots. And how can something called carrot cake be bad for you? Well, normally it is loaded with fat and oil. So I'm gonna show you a couple easy things you can do to change that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is start with an egg substitute product. 
Now this is basically like a vegetable starch that's been mixed into water and it acts as a binding agent. So I have the equivalent of two eggs. And for more information on that, you can go to my website at jensguiltlessgourmet.com. To that, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of applesauce. Now this acts as a moisturizer and will replace half of our oil in this recipe. Now the oil I'm using is coconut oil. It's cholesterol free and it works very well in baked goods. I have three quarters of a cup and it's gonna give a great coconut undertone to this cake. All right, to that I'm gonna add half a cup of organic cane sugar, half a cup of organic brown sugar. I stay with raw unprocessed sugars as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir. Okay. Now I'm gonna mix my dry ingredients. And it's important that you mix them together first before adding them so they're well combined. Now I have two cups of organic unbleached flour. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of baking soda, about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and three teaspoons of cinnamon. I'm gonna give this a quick mix together and then I'm gonna sift it together so that it's really well combined. Grab my sifter. Now if this was a fluffier cake, I would sift this more than just once, but carrot cake is kind of a nice dense cake, so, or this recipe in particular. I'll just sift this through like that. And now I'm gonna add it to my wet ingredients. And just start to whisk all this together. Okay, now I'm gonna add my vanilla. I have a tablespoon of vanilla. I'm gonna go ahead and add my pineapple as well. I have a quarter cup. No, no, I have about half a cup of pineapple. I love pineapple and I love it in my carrot cake. Oh, that smells so good with the vanilla in there too. And then I'm gonna add half a cup of shredded coconut. And again, that great coconut undertone with the coconut oil as well. I'm gonna stir that in. Mmm. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to a different type of spoon because I'm gonna fold in our carrots and I have four cups of shredded carrots. Oh, these make such beautiful cakes. Wow. Alrighty, as I'm folding that in, I'm also gonna add about a quarter cup of chopped pecans. And up to you, you can add walnuts, you could add macadamia nuts, or you could leave the nuts out. And a quarter cup of raisins. This is really one of those cakes that you can just play around with and have fun. You just can't play around with the amount of baking soda to flour ratio. You have to stick with those things. But as far as the other little added accoutrements, now I have a prepared baking sheet here that I've put some wax paper in the bottom so that I know this cake will come out easily. Whoops. It's a very non-stick pan. My wax paper doesn't even want to stay put. And this is the best thing you can do for yourself when you're baking, is to line the bottom of the pan with wax paper or parchment paper. Because how many times do you have a beautiful cake and it's just totally stuck? <laughs> My life got so much easier when I learned this little trick. And I have to admit, I didn't learn it until I was in my 20s, so I suffered through a lot of stuck cakes. There we go, mmm. Alrighty, let's get this in the oven. 360 degrees for about 40 minutes, or until the toothpick comes out clean. Mm. And we come back, we're gonna frost that and make our ginger martini surprise. Our cake is out of the oven, it's had time to cool, and I'm ready to make the frosting. And I'm gonna make a dairy-free, lower in fat cream cheese frosting. So I'm gonna start with about four ounces of soy cream cheese. You can use regular cream cheese if you like, but use the low-fat kind. <laughs> and I have about a quarter of a stick of soy margarine, non-hydrogenated and a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just gonna beat those together. Alrighty, 
Now to that I'm gonna add powdered sugar, and I've already pre-sifted this so that it doesn't clump in my frosting. A nice little trick when you're making powdered sugar frostings. There we go, let's mix this up a little bit before I turn the beaters on. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep adding powdered sugar until I've reached my desired consistency. And I wanna be able to uh, pipe this in a pastry bag, so I want it to be kind of thick. And so I just add it little by little so that I don't end up with too much powdered sugar in there. And if you do, just add a little bit of soy milk or regular milk. Okay, we're gonna add our last bit of powdered sugar because we're almost there. That should be good. I'm gonna use the spatula for this because those beaters are getting really stiff. Okay. Mm. All right, and as I'm putting this in, I'm gonna add just a little bit of fresh lime juice because I just wanted to have a little bit of an extra special flavor. And literally, I'm gonna add maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, just a teeny bit, and some fresh orange zest. Mmm. I love the smell of orange zest. And now when people have the cream cheese frosting, it's gonna have this little special taste in there. It's gonna go really great with the carrot cake. Alrighty. This is gonna be perfect. mix that up and next I'm gonna clean off my counter and decorate my cake I'm gonna do a really fun individual plating for these it's gonna be really pretty first I'm gonna fill my pastry bag I use pastry bags a lot and for years I didn't for years I would do all sorts of other things with frosting but these are so fun they're so easy to use there's so many things you can do with them and the more you get in the cooking, the more it's fun to try out all new techniques. And they're cheap. So here we go. Just gonna scoot this down in here. Now one of the tricks to using a pastry bag is don't fill it all the way to the top or you'll make a mess. So you just kinda scoot that down in there so you don't have any air bubbles. Set that frosting aside. And now to do my individual plating, I am gonna take a little cookie cutter or biscuit cutter. Mm, and I'm just gonna cut out little individual cakes. Oh, see how easy this is? It's so easy to make your home food look like restaurant food. And this is also an excellent way to kind of keep track of your portion size and your calories. Because if you just set the whole cake on the table, it's so easy to eat the whole cake. <laughs> This way, you just kind of keep in track. All right, so now I'm just gonna pipe a little frosting in the middle here. Mmm. Because we are gonna make a little double layer cake. And ooh, oh, this is such a nice moist carrot cake recipe. Wow. And again, it's got about a quarter of the fat of a normal carrot cake with all fresh organic ingredients. Mmm, this is so pretty. And our frosting too. Lower in fat, lower in calories. Every little bit helps when you're trying to eat healthy, to watch your weight, to watch your cholesterol. I have some beautiful nuts here. I'm just going to decorate the top with a couple walnuts. And we are just about ready to serve dinner. And now for our ginger martini surprise. I'm going to start with some fresh ginger. And we're going to muddle this into the martini. And also a couple of orange slices. And the fresh citrus and the ginger are going to taste so good in this. Just kind of muddle those together at the bottom to release the juices and kind of 
start the flavors combining. Mm. To that, I'm gonna add, oops, let's put some ice in first. <laughs> if you put the ice in at the end, it just splashes all over the place. There we go. Okay, now you get to hear about the surprise ingredient. It's carrot juice. I've managed to use root vegetables in each one of our courses. So about one part carrot juice, about one part apple juice, one part orange liqueur, and one part vodka. Mmm, I can smell that ginger and smell that orange. We're gonna give this a good shake. And the carrot juice is gonna give this a beautiful color. Alrighty. Let's pour these into our martini glasses. Mmm. Just such a gorgeous drink. And with some healthy carrot juice, apple juice, fresh ginger, fresh orange. For my garnish, I have some pickled ginger and an orange slice. And I'm just gonna lay that in there. How pretty is that? We've managed to use root vegetables in every course, from the entree to the dessert and even the martini. And if you have a recipe you'd like me to make healthier, please write to me at jensguiltlessgourmet.com. And cheers to a healthier planet and a healthier you. Mmm, wow, that is so good.